All right, guys, we're going to get into the hive today. This is in the spring here in February. It's just uh, barely above 50. So they're not going to be happy, so I'm suited up today. But we need to get in here and get ready for springtime. So I just spray in here and let them know I'm coming. Basically, we're just going to go in here and make sure we have our queen, put her in here, and uh, just check on everything, see where we're at before we get the flow going this spring. And these are just set up, ready to go for when the flow hits. I'm just checking them real quickly. This is one that they worked on last year and I'm looking for the queen as I go just in case she's up above because sometimes she is but that's just one from last year but here when this when the flow gets started the first thing they're going to do is start building out these combs this is just what I keep for the beetles. I just put that diatomaceous earth down in there. If y'all want to look at that. You can see that there are some beetles in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. but Right now I'm just making sure the queen ain't up on top. Because sometimes she is. And then after I'm sure she's not, we'll go ahead and get down into the second box, the actual hive. And being that it's springtime now, we'll go ahead and get the, well it ain't quite springtime, but we're close enough, but we'll go ahead and get the, the queen excluder put on here. And I'm wearing my suit today because well, it's cold out, they ain't going to be happy that we're in their hives. But we need to see where everything's at and how they're doing in order to be ready for spring, so. Again, we're checking for the queen on any, anything that we move. This one's loaded with beetles. All right, so it looks like we have one, two, three, four frames of brood going already. So that's good. February. They've got these pretty tied together. get into your hive really you want to make sure you stay away from the brood the brood section there where you see all the bees because where you see all the bees that's usually where your queen is going to be and you don't want to end up smashing her while you're trying to find her just give you an idea of what they're doing they've actually got a little bit of pollen in there sorry about that airplane may just edit that out but they got a little bit of, of pollen in there you can see the, the bee bread. All this stuff right in here is bee bread. And again, what we're doing is looking for the queen. I gotta grab something real quickly here.
Well, I couldn't find the, the hooks. I don't know where they're at right now. I'll find them here in a minute. Let's get these guys calmed back down. I know they're mad that was off for a while. going through your hive guys just be slow movements don't get in no hurry and I'm just looking to make sure they ain't making any kind of swarm cells or anything like that while we're looking for the queen I'm gonna look at her laying pattern once we get to the fruit area here So I'm just looking for eggs, I'm looking for queen cells, swarm cells, all that kind of stuff, just, and looking for the queen herself while we're going through these. So I haven't seen no eggs yet, I haven't seen the queen yet, there's no swarm cells, no kind of queen cells. Everything's looking good so far. Get on down to the next one. Get the girls to move over a little bit. Everything's really looking good so far. I'm not going to show you everything on the video. I'm just going to jump around so the video ain't too long for you guys. But I'm just trying to give you an idea of what we're looking for. I'm just making sure everything is set up and good to go for spring. So I found the brood section here. So I gotta be on the lookout for the queen. And they're carrying pollen around, which I'll show you here in just a minute. Let me make sure I don't see the queen. Okay, I've got the queen. Let me get the queen real quick. Let me just show you the queen. She's got a little green dot on her there. Hopefully y'all can see that. I can't see the camera, so I'm not sure. But let me go ahead and get her. And then uh, I'll show you the brood pattern there. All right, so I don't know if y'all can see it, but there's the brood and the brood on this side. I'll back out a little bit so you can see it. Let me see if I can show you. 
in here. Well, we got some larvae. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. The bees are all over it right there. Hang on one second. So you can see there's one larvae there. They are in different stages, so. And here's the whole frame. But you can see their pattern, everything's good. They're definitely ready for spring. Everything looks good. We got plenty of bees, so they're gonna be ready to go. And I got a pollen feeder that I use uh, in the springtime and in the uh, deep winter and part of the fall. It's one of them blue ones that you fill up with pollen and then uh, you just let it sit. It's weatherproof and all that kind of stuff. So now I'm just all I'm gonna do from here. I've got the queen. I know she's <coughs> I know she's good. So I'm just checking her brood pattern, which is just phenomenal. And uh, seeing if they got any kind of and they do. Yeah, they do. So we're looking for any kind of um, pollen, pollen cake. You know, uh, bee, bee bread, and we're looking for any of the. Uh, my mind just went blank, guys. The syrup stuff, the nectar, and we do have nectar. So I don't know where they're getting that from, mm -hmm. but as you can see there, there is nectar right there. That's all nectar. All of that is nectar. So they're picking up nectar early this year. That's good. That is excellent. This should be a good year, guys, as far as North Texas is concerned. Let's go ahead and hit them up again because, like I said, guys, this is not the right time of year. They don't like being in this. They're out getting pollen today from the feeder over there, but there's pollen in the area starting to bloom everywhere. Okay, so basically right here is where it ends as far as the brood nest. So that's good. She's not in, she's not trying to mass produce yet, so that's good. I don't want her mass producing just yet. All right, so I don't see any kind of queen cells. I don't see any kind of swarm cells. I don't see anything of that nature. They've got plenty of room down here in the hive box. There's 10 frames in the hive box. So I'm going to put it back together. And we're going to uh, go ahead and switch. We'll leave this with 10 frames, the other, the, uh, the super. We're going to leave it with 10 frames for now. And let them work on all 10 frames as, as we go into spring here. But once we get to the point where the nectar, is, we're in a nectar flow, at that point, I'll, I'll take them from 10 frames down to 9 frames and then let them fill that up and then we'll start stacking up to get the honey. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together, guys, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Just uh, what you're mainly looking for, guys, you're looking to see if you've got any kind of high beetle activity. And by the way, I'm going to put some of this hot guard. I'll go ahead and show you all that before I kill the video. But we're gonna put this hop guard in here in case we got any kind of mites so we really want to put it over the brood chamber that's the main thing we want to do is make sure it's over the brood chamber so starting right here is a brood and a brood so we're gonna go with those two and I'll just take one out of here 
and these are pretty nasty. Not really, so they're just sticky. And then you can see there that it's just there's a rib side, and I always put that rib side like that right over over the. You'll see me do it here. I try to do it while getting the bees out of the way. So I just ease it in there until the bees move out of the way. And then I'll slide that over. This next frame, I'll slide it over into its position. Try to make sure we don't get any of the bees caught up in it. And then I'll go right here and put a second one on the second frame over here. So, good thing I'm wearing my suit today. As you can see, they're being a little ferocious. But that's what happens when it's cold out. You know, just that's just part of it. And you just kind of learn to work around these the temperatures. But in the springtime, you got to get in there and check on everything and make sure we're good to go. So I'll just slide that in there. Make sure they're out of the way. Once they're out of the way, we'll go ahead and move the next frame over. Let's go ahead and see if we can calm them down a little bit. But all I'm going to do from here, guys, is just start putting the uh, cage back together. And we're good to go come out springtime i'm gonna take these two the hot guards off and i'm gonna do this to all the, all the hives uh, i'm gonna put the queen uh the queen excluder on top of this one and then we'll put the super on top and then this hive done and complete so you're caught up guys that's what we're doing this spring that's what everybody should be doing just prepping everything getting everything ready for the for the uh, spring flow that's the important thing I love you guys. Get into work, stay into work, get the word in you. Probably the most important thing you can do. Uh, but uh, we'll talk to you guys in the next video. All right, so that's the box we were working on. And I went ahead and got the, you can see the white spot there. All the, all the, all four hives have their uh, queen excluder on them and all of them have a super on them. Now it's, it's, it's a little early to be doing all this, but because of our early spring here, I'm just gonna show you all, all four hives. But because of, because of the early spring, we went ahead and just set this all up. So, there's those three, and then I'm going to show you the feeder. There's old Blazy Wazy. And then right here is hive number four. So, they're all done. They all got the queen excluders on them. All the queens are alive. All the queens are producing. This hive here, uh, her she's barely producing at this point, so we may have to, we may have to swap out uh, the queens on this hive. Don't know yet we'll have to wait and see on that but uh for now we're gonna let it go uh, it is really early i mean it's february it's it's really too early for them to be mass producing but again those three hives over there they're 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 getting after it and then the feeder is way over here and they're they're 
they're hitting it but not very hard so there must be a lot more pollen going around than i think there is uh, if you give me a second we'll go take a look at a tree but um right now as far as i know no tree is actually mass producing any kind of flowers at this point but that's the feeder that we use and it, it, it is expensive but guys it's absolutely worth it if you're going to be uh, running bees all the time because uh, if you get pollen traps for your your hives you can go ahead and collect your own pollen you won't have to order it every year uh, ordering it's expensive because you got to pay shipping and handling but if you can collect your own pollen throughout the year uh, then you know pollen is basically free so just make sure you allow your bees to get pollen as well don't be trapping them all the time but we're gonna go ahead and pause it this is waterproof guys it's probably the best feeder that exists you know as far as feeding them when we're in a, a dearth in the summertime or when we're in a the winter season and they're able to get out and get around you know so they can continue to feed and not run out of things so uh, at this point i'm not giving them sugar water just so you guys know uh in any way form or fashion uh, about in january we had a we had like four days where it got up, up above 50 and i uh, eased my way out see I, i've been crippled here for about literally four or five months now i mean crippled i mean i broke my ankle uh it's it's good now i mean it's in a shoe it was my right foot right there and and i can almost walk normal now but not completely but pretty dang close to it um but i was crippled so I, I wasn't able to get any videos to you guys i wasn't able to work on the on the hives i wasn't be able to get out to the hives i wasn't able to do anything and so as soon as i could in january which is the wrong time of the year uh, we just went ahead and I got out there when I was able to start moving around and I went and checked on each hive and one day at a time worked on each hive and made sure everything was good to go because I was way behind and I gave them uh, sugar water that was uh, two to one instead of one to one instead of 50 50 it was two sugars to one water uh, you know it was basically you fill up your your uh, container two thirds full and then fill the rest of the way up with water. Uh, you know that that kind of tricks the bees into thinking it's basically stored up honey basically and they and they work it as if it is honey or honey that's just about ready well i'm gonna pause it and i'm gonna show you a couple trees and then we'll, we'll kill the video okay so here's one of the trees and this is just your you can see here if it'll zoom in on it maybe it will you can see they're not quite budded out yet but they're getting close to budding and that's what this tree looks like. I mean, it's all over this tree, but it's, it's not budding. It'll be another, uh, probably three weeks before it actually starts to kick out. And then the plum tree, as you can see, it's, it's, it's not even close. It's just sticks at this point. It is turning green though. And then you got a pear, which if you look at it real closely, again it's the same thing let's see if it'll focus in just getting started so you're talking probably about three weeks four weeks out on them that tree right there is basically dead and then we got the peach tree now the peach tree has actually begun to flower and so this is the first flowering tree that i've seen so far uh, the red buds here in north texas haven't begun to flower yet there are some there are like there's like one or two trees i have seen that are starting to flower so they're flowering very early this year i mean extremely like a month ahead of time so it appears we're going to get an early spring that's a fig tree over there of course it ain't doing nothing because it's gonna wait till it's hot hot but we do like i said you know there is a little bit of flowering going on it is happening and you got the uh of course you got them right there and you can see they're working those over the dandelions Of course, I don't want to zoom in on them. But you can see they do they do work the dandelions. I mean, people say they don't like dandelions, but if that's all they can find, then they will collect from dandelions. And like I said, you know, there's not that many over there on the uh, feeder. So if 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 they're not on that feeder it means that there is pollen in the area now you can see this kind of stuff here 
you know you got some flowering going on down here too all over but again I don't know where they're getting it they're getting yellow pollen and uh, so far that's basically all I've seen is yellow and orange so I don't know where they're getting that from but you can see that here we are starting to get some some kind of I mean the the grass is dead and they're live both because we we've been getting warm up into the upper 50s low 60s and then drop into the uh, have a cold spell where we don't get above 30 and then we're back into the 50s and 60s and it's just going back and forth so but at this point like I said this since we're, we're going through these phases this is probably the best time to go ahead and prep up and get your your, your equipment ready since this is a very very odd year now for other people in the north you know obviously if you're way up in the north and it's still going to be cold for another month it's, it's not time to get in your hives yet but you know we got into the 50s today and so it was time to do these and they're ready to go so i don't have to mess with these again until really uh, the flow starts but they're prepped um they all got the treatment in them so if there's any mites that we'll get rid of the mites and when we go back in it in the spring we'll go ahead and take those mite strips out so but they'll also begin to tear those mite strips up over time and and take them apart and pull them out themselves so you know they may be gone by the time we get in there but it'll treat them nonetheless and you're supposed to do that at least twice but this year i mean i've looked in all the trays i don't you know different people have different setups but we we've got the trays in the back that we can pull out and then we look down in there to see if there's any kind of mites sitting down in that tray and if there is we go ahead and treat them now we look through them and you know like i said that was in january and I, I didn't even find one but we went ahead and treated them nonetheless because well <laughs> might as well treat them you know just be on the safe side but a good strong hive can basically take care of itself guys uh, and, and that's the truth they can they can really take care of themselves so but you do want to to, to make sure that you you do what you can for them to help them so guys that's that's it for today we love you guys we'll see you in the next video and uh if i get time this year i'll be making some uh nuke frames nuke boxes five frame boxes uh, that way as as we go forward i'm going to show you how you know as 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 we go into spring and they start to mass produce we'll uh make some five frame boxes and that way I can show you how to go ahead and make your own queens and get you a new hive started off of the hive you already got without disturbing the hive that you have. <laughs> really. And, and that's that's the key so your hive keeps going because you want to build up your boxes and, and get your honey in there. If you're if you're doing it for honey. So but anyways guys, you can see they're pulling that pollen in. I mean you could if you watch them real closely, you see that orange on them. I mean that yellow. And that's that's not from guys, that's not from the feeder. They're getting that yellow from the, either dandelions or something else, and I don't know what all or what it is that they're getting it from. Like I said, the only flowering I see is over there on that peach tree. But you can clearly see against that red, that yellow pollen that they're pulling in. And they're not coming from that direction. So, I don't know, you know, something's back in there because they're coming down and around and in. So, I don't know what it is, guys, or where they're getting it from. I guess it's the dandelions at this point. But these feeders, the way these feeders work is they're not going to, they only pull off that feeder when they can't get regular pollen from a regular flower. Just understand that. So you can keep them feeders up year round. Uh, if when, when there's a, if we get in a, into a dearth, I'll show you what I mean by that. I mean, they only get in them feeders when you're in a bad dearth and when they can't get their own pollen. You know, it's full of pollen all the time, but in the, in the, when there's pollen in the flowers, they don't go to that. They don't go to that feeder. And I'll show you, it'll become bone dry. There won't be any bees on it. Maybe one or two instead of hundreds like normal. All right, guys. We're going to get off here. We'll talk to you later.